Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 26, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got a couple of interesting diaries this weekend that I would like uh, to start out with. The first one by Xavier is looking for examples of malware exploiting the fact that Microsoft Teams is storing its authentication tokens in clear text. I mentioned this vulnerability, I believe on Friday it was actually, so uh, last podcast last week, and Xavier ran a virus total query to find malware that attempts to access the respective file. And after rejecting some false positives, he actually found a sample that matched the query and indeed attempted to exfiltrate those tokens. Interestingly, the sample was uploaded late last week and had a creation date, which of course may be fake, exactly one month earlier. At this point, the file is recognized as malicious by most anti-malware products and identified as a member of the Floxif uh, malware family. This malware family, according to Malwarebytes, is all is known for modifying files and then attaching its own backdoor uh, to these files. So uh, this may be a bit a new thing for Floxif, uh, but uh, Xavier noted how this sample looks for cookies and other tokens in numerous other locations. So it is not something that was specifically created to take advantage of uh, the Microsoft Teams issue, but uh, they just added yet another spot to look uh, for uh, tokens. I never ran to a malware sample, but the sample the malware downloaded appears to no longer available because, well, the domain was taken down. Didi has a quick recipe to try and find it as long as you still know the IP address associated with the domain. Well, it's a simple curl request to connect to the IP address, but don't forget to also set the host name because of course you often end up with name virtual hosting where you have multiple host names on the same IP address. And WhatsApp, in the first security advisory in over a year, released an update uh, patching two arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities. The flaws affect Android and iOS and are exploited if you either establish a call or if you're watching a video file received uh, by a WhatsApp. I'm not sure how easy it would be uh, to exploit these vulnerabilities, but essentially it's one of those typical sort of video decoding vulnerabilities uh, that uh, often, of course, happen in products like this. And Sophos on Friday fixed a code injection flaw in the user portal and the web admin feature of its firewall product. The vulnerability has, according to Sophos, already been exploited in some targeted attacks. Aside of applying the patch, you definitely should limit access to the user portal and web admin uh, by not exposing them on the WAN interface. And well, as long as you have the automatic hotfix installation feature enabled, no further action should be required. But well, I would still double check, make sure that you are patched for this. And we got uh, phishing attempts against developers. And this is a little bit a trend I think I'm seeing where we have these a little bit more targeted uh, phishing attempts. So it's not the very generic ones that uh, sort of uh, try to get anybody hooked within the company, but uh, they specifically target communities like, for example, developers. These uh, phishing attempts uh, impersonate Circle CI. Uh, that's a quite uh, popular continuous integration platform. That's what the CI in Circle CI stands for, meaning it's used uh, to basically test and deploy complex software products. And uh, of course, uh, these uh, products typically then have hooks with API keys and such into other uh, development environments like, uh, for example, GitHub. And these phishing attempts uh, are not just going for the Circle CI credentials, but also for your GitHub credentials. Two-factor authentication, always a good idea. And uh, quite often people think that, well, these more technical people in a company are maybe less susceptible to phishing. Well, it all depends 
on the type of phishing email and uh, something, um, for example, asking you to reset passwords or uh, update packages or whatever uh, is often quite tempting for developer to just click on because these are the type of emails that uh, fit sort of what they're doing daily and uh, are more likely than to be successful in stealing credentials. Remember with phishing, it's always successful, always depends on how well you're able uh, to target a particular uh, message uh, to the recipient. Well, and that's it uh, for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.